Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning friends, in the last lecture and also in coming few lectures, I will be just sharing few philosophy, few do's and don'ts before we start rigorously following a procedure to design an aircraft. In the last lecture I showed you that for the preliminary stage when our students they design aero models. It is more driven by thumb rule and few things are heuristic as well and that is exactly why I said that please do not bring those things with you when you attend my lecture but truly speaking if you find somebody is really a passionate aero modeler, his feeling for numbers are huge. You have to respect an aero modeler, truly aero modeler. I work with few of them, Captain Amulya, Captain Mukherjee and huge number of things I learned from them. Only you as a participant of this course should realize that. The feel of an aero modeler, truly aero modeler, he may not be able to explain the law of aerodynamics the way you want, but if you have learned this course, you should be able to translate his feel into a number or into a procedure based on scientific assumptions. So that is where the aero modeler and this course will merge, but not at this stage. After we build up ourselves, at appropriate time, I will bring an aero modeler very respectful aero modeler and share some, some thoughts with him to prove my uh, point. Okay, we will still continue on few things which will be useful and it is also a part of revision. We have seen that we have been talking about W by S, we have been talking about T by W and when it comes to T by W, how much T by W is required for a normal say cruise dominating airplane? If I want to really see that, then I know that T equal to D and L equal to W, that means T by W is 1 by C L by C D. So if I write T by W cruise equal to 1 by C L by C D. So what is the T by W required for cruise? How do I answer? That means I need to know at what C L by C D I am cruising. For example, if I am cruising such that drag is minimum, let's say I am cruising such that drag is minimum, then I know that for this condition C L by C D has to be maximum and that means C L has to be C D naught by K this number. So immediately I know T by W will be 1 by C L by C D and let us say C L by C D max this value. When I write T by W cruise, I say cruise for minimum T by W, that means C L by C D is maximum, that means drag is minimum. So I know that value T by W as 1 by C L by C D max, which corresponds to the C L equal to C D naught by K. Typically C L by C D max could be 15, one number I am writing. So you could see immediately T by W cruise 
is 1 by 15 okay but here you should understand this t by w cruise is 1 by 15 this is not equal to t by w takeoff why for two reason that for t by w takeoff we need to have a different criteria for t by w takeoff we have seen that if i write t minus d minus w sin gamma and if i want to take off without any acceleration that is steady climb small climb i am doing then t by w is roughly equal to w sin gamma plus 1 by cl by cd we have shown that roughly this is approximately so t by w takeoff will be more governed by this part the climb angle gamma t by w cruise will be more driven by cl by cd max right so if i am a designer i immediately know what is my t by w cruise required because i know roughly it will be cl by cd 10 or 15 whatever way i am designing so i know t by w cruise i require this much 1 by 15 and t by w takeoff how much is required one way to get it is okay if i am trying to climb at some angle 15 degree climb angle 20 degree climb angle so i can easily see here of course this w will not be here this w will not be here yes right directly proportional to sin gamma but you also understand this t by w will play important role during takeoff also takeoff means that phase that is from start to a speed where v takeoff has been achieved if i want to shrinken this length before it gets the v takeoff speed i have to accelerate the airplane faster if i want to reduce this length so that means if i want to really reduce this length then t by w has to be very high because t by w will decide how much active force is applied to accelerate the body or the airplane in this case from zero to v takeoff so t by w will play a role here t by w will play a role here At cruise what is the t by w required t by w for climb also without going into detail you know if you want to go for a turn high rate of turn t by w also will play a role there we'll see as we evolve step by step this is one we should be very very clear when i am mentioning all this thing is the one point you should understand when you are designing an airplane we cannot specify that t by w cruise i want this much t by w take off i want this much t by w hum acceleration parameter i want this much because why because notice that if t by w cruise is 15 and if i want to know what should be t by w where from i should start then that will be different than this value because i want t by w cruise some number what is happening as it is going from here to here the weight is going on reducing because fuel is being consumed so what is a better approach is we if we know how much fuel is consumed then modify this weight here that is i have to increase this weight and we talk in terms of t by w take off this is important every such ratios with weight will be converting back into w take off that should be kept in your mind okay and the reason is very simple that if i say t by w cruise is some number i know that that w is not w take off but finally as a designer i want to know what is that w take off required that is where from i start so that's why always it is advisable you convert this number any number which is divided by w convert it to w take off by appropriately adjusting the weight 
most of the cases it is because of fuel consumption and that's not a very difficult task. We'll be doing that, there's a procedure doing that. So this was one thing I thought I must share with you before you start using them. Another important parameter you'll find when I'm talking about CL by CD, max, sometime you remember for power we talk about CL 3 by 2 by CD max. Let us again go back to performance. I am talking in terms of range and endurance that will be one of our uh, important parameter, performance parameter. So if I go back, you remember that CL for minimum drag, the condition was CL equal to CD naught by K and CL for minimum power was equal to 3 CD naught by K. So another purpose of writing all these things is that to give you enough time, you go back and revise all those things so that you are prepared for application of this understanding in terms of synthesizing a design, synthesizing concept to get a conceptual design. Okay, if it is CL minimum, for minimum drag I mean, CL required for minimum drag is CD naught by K and you know that this, is, this corresponds to CL by CD maximum and this corresponds to CL 3 by 2 by CD maximum. Remember? Okay. Now let us see, we'll play around with this. So for, if I write now CD equal to CD naught plus KCL square. So if I write now CD for minimum drag is CD naught plus K. CD for minimum drag is this one. So this will become CD naught by K. So this will become 2 CD naught. So CD for minimum drag is 2 CD naught. This is nothing new for you. Similarly, CD for minimum power will be CD naught plus K into CL square means 3 CD naught by K. So this is equal to 4 CD naught. Please notice this, that CD for minimum power is twice the CD naught and CD for minimum power is 4 CD naught, okay. So obviously V for uh, minimum power will be, because after all you are flying lift equal to weight, that implies V equal to under root 2 W by S rho CL. So V for minimum power will be what? You know, V for minimum power I means CL is 3 CD naught by K. So I write it as under root 2 W by S rho under root 3 CD naught by K. So that will be, you know, let me write here so that things are clear. That will be. Uh, 2 W by S rho under root 3 CD naught by K. This is what is here, right? Similarly, V for minimum drag, these are straightforward for you, you all know all these things. This only will help you to go back and revise the notes that whenever I take some assumption, you understand what I am doing. There is no objection here. Now let us say, with this, if I now try to find out which case the drag will be more. Why we are asking this question? We are trying to find out. Finally, CD is here and drag means when I talk about drag, this is dynamic pressure, that is half rho v square s into cd, right? One thing is clear, when I am flying at Cl is equal to under root 3 cd naught by k, which is a 
minimum power case to maintain lift equal to weight at same altitude I will be flying slower because CL will be higher compared to CL required for minimum drag case right. So, the dynamic pressure for this case for minimum power case will be less as far as dynamic pressure is concerned I can write dynamic pressure corresponding to minimum power will be less compared to dynamic pressure for minimum drag. No objection in this because the CL for minimum power is higher as compared to CL for minimum drag. So, the speed for minimum power will be lesser compared to CL for minimum drag to maintain the same weight the lift equal to weight naturally dynamic pressure which is half rho v square if both the things we are comparing at same altitude so dynamic pressure for minimum power will be less than dynamic pressure at minimum drag. So, drag minimum power will be half rho v square for v I will write 2 w by s rho 3 c d naught by k and drag for minimum drag case that is L by d maximum in this case L by d is maximum this will be half rho 2 w by s rho into under root c d naught by k. So, if I ask a question in which case drag will be more let us find out. So, if we take the ratio between these two I can write d minimum power by d minimum drag this will be equal to 2 by root 3. Do you see how it is happening I missed some point here. So, drag minimum power will be half rho v square into s into c d. How much was c d for minimum power? For minimum power c d was 4 c d naught. We have shown that similarly here I missed s into 2 c d naught right because we have seen c d for minimum power is 4 c d naught and c d for minimum drag is 2 c d naught which just we have shown that right. So, now if I take the ratio you will find this 2 everything will get cancelled 4 and 2 so the 2 remain there and root 3 root 3 will be there right do it yourself. So, this ratio will be roughly 2 by 1.732 and this is equal to 1.1547. So, as a designer we say drag during minimum power condition is 15 percent more than L by D maximum case. Right? You can see that drag during minimum power is 15 percent roughly more than the drag during L by D max case. Right? How that is important? Let us see. Now, the designer interpretation how a designer will utilize this that is very important. If drag is increased by 15 percent. for minimum power case right minimum power case here means suppose this is a case where C L 3 by 2 by C D is maximum with that we are going on and we know how C L 3 by 2 by C D has come you can refer back your lecture. If that is true that means C L by C D if drag rise is 15 percent then I can write C L by C D as 1 by 1.15 which has come from here the ratio of this two is 1.1547 which is equal to 0.866 L by D max. 
Is this part clear? What, how a designer is utilizing this relationship? It says drag during minimum power is 15% more than the drag if you are flying at minimum drag. So CL by CD will be now modified because CD has increased by 15% and this one by 1.5 so that gives 0.866 L by D max. With this understanding, we will fix our initial design parameters, for example, which will, be, which will have relevance for range and endurance. If you recall, if I take jet and a prop, I'm talking about range and endurance, which is also called loiter. This is 0.866. L by D max and here it is L by D max and here it is L by D max here it is 0.866 L by D max so let us connect if you see the expression for range for a jet driven airplane the condition for range, maximum range is CL3 by 2 by CD should be maximum. So which is like a minimum power conditions equivalently. And you know for CL3 by 2 by CD, if I take that, then I have seen CL by CD should be 0.66 of L by D max. But for endurance for a jet airplane, it will be maximum when L by D is max. So I am putting is L by D max. For a propeller, it is other way. For maximum range, the condition says it should fly such that L by D should be maximum. And for endurance, it should be CL3 by 2 by CD. That condition, it gives 0.86 L by D max. You must be wondering, I have not so far announced the books, textbook I'll be using. I'll be doing that in the next class. Uh, because I'll be following two, three books, so mostly one book which I'll be following initial part is Raymer, aircraft designed by Raymer, which you must be knowing one of the most popular book, but I will formally give you the volume, etc. edition. And please understand why we are doing all those revision. Because for an aircraft designer, what will be the weight of the airplane is a big question. How do I know how much is the weight? Luckily, our situation is not situation of during Wright brothers time. There were no historical data, right? Okay, see how great they were. See, I always say from Wright brothers, so much of aircraft, why we could not design a good civilian aircraft. One of my friend told, they had Wright brothers. We have brothers, perhaps they are not right, they are wrong. And that is the, my motivation for this lecture series that after this lecture, at least we have initiated a process creating right brothers among the wrong brothers. And among the wrong brothers, I am one of those wrong brothers because I am also, I have failed to design a civilian good aircraft. Main issue comes on the weight of the airplane. So now the situation is a little different. Whenever you think of an aircraft, Let's say civilian aircraft. First question comes, what sort of a range you are talking about? Short range or long range aircraft? Then comes, what sort of a number of passengers you are talking about? And what sort of a speed you are talking about? Fortunately, whatever you think, you will find some of that class is there. So you have got a lot of database now. So it is very easy to select a baseline aircraft for the mission what you are looking for, closer to that. So from there, you can easily get some number, okay, my aircraft will be this weight class. Right? When I'm saying this, please understand what I'm trying to tell you is we'll be using a lot of historical data to get the initial numbers. For example, if this is W0, gross weight of the airplane, 
it will be composed of, you know, we call it build up method, weight build up method. We will break it into different, different components. For example, weight of crew, we know. Weight of payload, we will be knowing. How many passenger or any other military payload. Then weight of fuel and you say empty weight. This is very important, empty weight. And if I now see here, out of these four, this is under my hand. I know a priori, this a priori I know. But WF, which is the fuel weight, and WE is the empty weight, these are to be carefully find out. And there we'll be using a lot of historical data. If you see now, if I rearrange this, I can write W0. Or let's say, if I write WF as a function of WF by W0 into W0 and WE as WE by W0 into W0. What is the meaning of this? That based on the historical data, if I know this ratio WF by W0, based on the historical data, if I know WE by W0, then my life will be simpler. And the statistical data, whatever is available, they are being made available in this fashion. So that becomes easier for us to uh, use for to get initial gross weight. Another point you should understand WF, which is the fuel weight, it will be direct function of what sort of mission you have got. You have a takeoff, cruise, you may accelerate, dive, you may again go up, so many things possible. You may loiter. So depending upon type of mission requirement, so this is more driven by mission requirement. What is the mission of the airplane? What are the missions? What sort of operation is supposed to do? What sort of maneuver is supposed to do? So in the next class, we'll be starting from here. How do I get the initial weight estimates using historical data? Right? And also we'll be talking about mission profiles. Thank you very much.